Welcome back to the Self-Centered Leo Shit Podcast. I am your host, Wish Bang. Let's get into it. The content provided in this podcast episode is for informational purposes only and should not be considered as professional advice. For expert advice and guidance, we recommend consulting a qualified professional in the relevant field as it pertains to your situation. It is hard to imagine a more stupid or more dangerous way of making decisions than by putting those decisions in the hands of people who pay no price for being wrong. Thomas Sowell. These are just my thoughts and my perspective. I am in no way trying to sway or influence anyone's ideas or change your mind about anything, anyone, or any place. With that being said, I'm just here to discuss my thoughts and how I view things. You don't have to like it. You don't even have to agree with it. But it is what it is. And on that note, let's get into it. I've been itching, not going to lie. I've been itching to talk more about Puff Daddy and the allegations being brought up against him. Now, I'm not a Puffy fan, so I don't really keep up with Puffy as far as music personal life none of that shit i'm just now seeing more of him because of his relationship with carisha really that's really what has brought him to the forefront for me but the allegations i've heard all the time about puffy for years none of this stuff is new information it's just becoming more real because that's what social media does social media brings shit to life and a lot of the things that are coming out have been a lot more detailed than the rumor mill. And this case with Cassie was kind of like another nail in the coffin because how descriptive, 35 pages, descriptive scenarios, situations, and predicaments that she was in under the under the microscope of Puffy? What is it? What 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 do we call his influence on her. I mean, there is a sense of control in it. But at the same time, there has to be something else that's influencing it that would have... And I, I hate when people say money. Oh, it's money. It was the money. Yeah, I feel like money was a factor in it. But Cassie had reached a point where she was Cassie. She can model. She had her own notoriety. She was building her own relationship. So there were there was a point in her career while she was still with Puffy that she could have been Cassie on her own if that's what she wanted to be. Now, I don't believe in victim shaming or victim blaming because someone's state of mind is can always be in question depending on their circumstance. So you cannot speak to why she stayed or why she didn't leave because everyone's perspective of a situation is completely different. That's like people who grow up in the same household, but there's five different versions of that household as it is told by each individual person and their experience. So with that being said, I can't speak to why she stayed. I personally just don't feel like money was the only influence. I feel like people don't understand how much fear plays into just your thought process. You can you can scare yourself out of being successful. You can scare yourself out of doing things you want to do. So I can imagine how it must have felt to be a young lady trying to make a name for herself under the supervision or care of this hip hop mogul who may be promising you things that you can only dream of. I'm going to read a section of the court document just to kind of back up where the mind state could have been for her. Um, it says, Miss Ventura met Mr. Combs in 2005 when she was 19 years old and he was 37. He signed her to his label, Bad Boy Records, and within a few years, Lord Miss Ventura 
into an ostentatious, fast-paced, drug-fueled lifestyle and into a romantic relationship with him, her boss, one of the most powerful men in the entertainment industry and a vicious, cruel, and controlling man nearly two decades her senior. Mr. Combs asserted complete control over Ms. Ventura's personal and professional life, therefore ensuring her inability to escape his hold. He provided unprecedented avenues for success for the aspiring artist, but in return demanded obedience, loyalty, and silence. Throughout their relationship, Mr. Combs was prone to uncontrollable rage and frequently beat Miss Ventura savagely. These beatings were witnessed by Mr. Combs' staff, employees of Bad Boy Entertainment, and Mr. Combs' related businesses, but no one dared to speak up against her, well, against their frightening and ferocious boss. I won't read through the entire document, but as you read more, the red flag just get even hotter, okay? But I've been saying Diddy was an apex predator from if you see how he be making niggas squirm, if you've seen them on Drink Champs with Nori, Jadakiss, and Fab, that episode had to be the most awkward shit and uncomfortable shit I've ever seen in my life. That nigga Nori was literally watching his life flash before his eyes with every decision that he made. Puff calling him daddy, trying to force him to blow out the candles on the cake. Puff telling Fab, oh, why you don't party with me no more? You miss me. It was hella uncomfortable. And it's like, it coming like the people them scared to speak up for themselves or scared to speak up in general. Makes you wonder, like, what the fuck Puffy got on niggas? Or what kind of power Puffy really be pulling while these niggas be shook like this? They be shook a puff. That's just wild. Speaking of shook ones, Joe Bunn Podcast. I love them niggas, but them niggas was nervous when it came to talking about Puffy. They was skating on thin ice. They were trying their hardest not to say what they wanted to say, but say what they wanted to say without saying what they wanted to say. It was very much read between the lines, but I'm trying to say it, but somebody stopping me from saying it. Like, they kept on, you could see where it's like, Joe wanted to say something, but then they got ice, like, chill out, chill out, chill out. Or it's just saying something, he trying to word it in a way where it don't make Puff look like, yo, Puff got these niggas shook in the street. That's all I'm going to say. And that's that on Puffy, because it's more to come. And I'm sure there's going to be more things to roll out, because all the years of, his wildness, somebody got a video somewhere. A video going to pop up on the internet soon. You know, the proof that people need to see. Because a lot of these niggas is hiding behind the fact that they ain't seen no video, they ain't hear no audio. So they kind of contemplating and going back and forth with the idea of it being true enough for them to say, yeah, this nigga's wildin'. So once those videos start getting leaked, I'm sure that's going to change the energy surrounding the whole situation. And let me say this. Cassie getting restitution is not the same as a money grab. Just to be clear, a civil case, the purpose of a civil case is for monetary compensation. So Cassie getting restitution is money's owed, okay? So a lot of guys are out here talking about money grab, money grab. That's not what a money grab looks like. Because if she was about just money, she would have did this 10 years ago. So let's be realistic here. Niggas be saying anything on the internet and it be irritating, super irritating. Like use discernment. At some point, you got to use your brain as a man who could possibly be a father one day, as a man who is a brother, a, um, uncle, a son, a cousin. Use your brain when y'all think about what y'all saying about women who are assaulted. Understand the level of dominance that is taken over some people in certain dynamics where fear drives them from not leaving their situation. Be considerate because you never know who in your circle is trapped in a situation and can't get out of it. And they can't tell you because you are not going to help them. 
you are going to look at them like they're crazy or you are going to judge them and ask them, well, why you ain't eat? Or why you ain't say no when it happened the first time? Like, use your brain. Use your brain. Do some more research so you can understand how to deal with people. Because it's not just about victims. How to deal with people and meet people where they are to kind of help them get to their next level. Okay? Thank you. Megan Party, honey, I always say, when you break up with someone, that's when they become all the things that you don't want in a person. But when you were with them, they weren't those things. Because now that it's over, Meg is insinuating that Party has a small penis and he's broke all of a sudden. But when you were with him, he was bouncing that ass and twerking and sucking his tongue out his head. So make it make sense. We got to make it make sense. We got to keep it real. Or don't say nothing at all. In the words of North, I'm not going to lie to you. So if you don't want me to say it, I won't say it, but I'm not going to lie. And that's on period. And honestly, that's really a good way to set boundaries. That's really a good way to let people know where you stand about a situation without necessarily being offensive. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you want me to tell you the truth or not? If you don't, then I won't say anything at all because I'm not going to lie to you about something I see is a concern. So if everybody started to do that and is more honest with themselves and with the people around them, we would be so surprised at how people would be more accountable for their actions and be more accountable for the things that they say and they do. And that also goes into how you blog. Blogging is, I mean, blogging used to be a hobby. Started out as a hobby and then it turned into a business. But with that being said, we have to remember that there's still a level of journalism that's expected when you are covering real stories and talking about real issues. Now, sharing your opinion is fine, but passing your opinion as fact is a problem and not fact-checking when you have other people sharing their opinions or have people on your platforms presenting themselves as someone that was at a particular place at a particular time with certain people without validating the information it's dangerous it's a dangerous cycle that we have on the internet where I don't even want to say fake news but where false information is circulated and with the power of social media shit can get around so fast like a car accident happens and one person sends one video to one platform with 5 million followers, now when the details of the situation comes out, you don't know what to believe anymore because the person that got there first shared what they had, and it's like, fact check. Please fact check. Fact check in everything that you do. Fact check in every aspect of your life and when you're communicating with other people because you can spread a lie that is tiny to you, but it's huge somewhere else. So I would just wish that blogs are being held more accountable and fact-checking the information that they're sharing because, you know, the public has the right to know information, but it needs to be accurate. Let's keep it accurate. Thank you for listening to the Self-Centered Leadership Podcast. I'm your host, Weesh Bang, and that concludes episode four. I'll see you again next time. The creative is the place where no one else has ever been. You have to leave the city of your comfort and go into the wilderness of your intuition. What you'll discover will be wonderful. What you'll discover is yourself. Clarissa Pinkola Estes.